In this brief lecture, we will review how sample sizes are determined. Please note, we will use more sophisticated methods when we turn to null hypothesis significance test in Chapter 13. Researchers are like Goldilocks. They want their sample size just right, not too large and not too small. Too large a sample wastes scarce resources. Too small a sample risks missing small effects. This lecture has four objectives. One, we will review the basic method for estimating sample size for the mean using z-values. Two, we will review the basic method for estimating sample size for the proportion using z-values. Three, the problem of shrinkage will be discussed. We will briefly discuss more sophisticated methods for estimating sample size using g-power. Three factors affect sample size. One, the chosen confidence level. The higher the confidence level, the larger the required sample. Two, the allowable error or E. The allowable error is like the confidence interval's margin of error. It is impossible to know the actual margin of error without knowing the sample size. Researchers use their judgment to estimate allowable error. The larger the allowable error, the smaller the required sample size. Three, variability of the data. The more variable the data, the larger the sample. Let's review calculating sample size for means. Here is the formula. The sample size symbolized by n equals the z-value for the confidence level multiplied by the presumed population standard deviation over the allowable error squared. Do not forget to complete this formula. Square the results of z times sigma over e. The Metropolitan Transit Authority wants to estimate how much people spend on public transportation during a 90-day period. Estimate the sample size at a 95% and 99% confidence level. The population standard deviation is unknown, but the sample standard deviation is about $20. The allowable error is $4.5. Step 1. Enter the data into the formula. For the 95% confidence level, z equals 1.96. For the 99% confidence level, z equals 2.58. Step 2. Multiply z by the presumed population standard deviation, $20. Step 3. Divide z times the presumed population standard deviation by the allowable error. Step 4. Square z times sigma over the allowable error. For a 95% confidence level, we would need a sample size of 76 passengers. For a 99% confidence level, the sample size is 132 passengers. Please note, we cannot have a fractional sample size. Note on rounding. Sample sizes must be a whole number. You cannot, after all, interview a third of a person. If the calculated value is not a whole number, round up to the next highest whole number. Rounding down will give you a sample size that is a tad too small. Estimating sample size using Excel. Excel has no built-in sample size function. These tables show the required sample size using z-values from the area under the curve table and Excel. Estimating sample size for proportions. Here is the formula for estimating sample size for a proportion. The sample size n equals the sample proportion p times 1 minus the sample proportion times the z value over the allowable error squared. A pet food company wants to survey dog owners. Estimate the sample size at a 95% and 99% confidence levels. The estimated population proportion is that 25% of households have a dog. The allowable error is 2.5%. Step 1. Enter the data into the formula. The z value for a 95% confidence level is 1.96. The z value for a 99% confidence level 
is 2.58. Step 2, find 1 minus p. 1 minus 0.25 equals 0.75. Step 3, multiply p times 1 minus p and then find z over the allowable error. Step 4, multiply p times 1 minus p and find z over e squared. Step 5, round up your answers if necessary. At a 95% confidence level, a sample size of 1,153 is needed. A sample of 1,997 is needed for a 99% confidence level. Estimating sample size for proportions using Excel. Excel does not have a built-in sample size function for proportions. As you can see from this Excel workbook, it is easy to use Excel to find the necessary sample size at a variety of confidence levels. When there is no estimate for the sample proportion, use 50%, which will give the largest sample possible. Let's discuss shrinkage, which is when the sample size shrinks due to non-response error. Shrinkage and non-response error. The formulas we just reviewed calculate the minimum sample size. Samples conducted among human subjects shrink as respondents fail to answer questions or quit the study. Good researchers size their samples to allow for shrinkage. Limitations of these methods. These methods focus on z-values, but z-values are not always appropriate. Important null hypothesis significance test considerations are ignored. Effect size, probability of type 2 errors, and statistical power. These topics will be discussed in detail starting in Chapter 13 of Clear-Sighted Statistics. More sophisticated tools are needed to estimate sample sizes for t-tests, f-tests, chi-square test, among other analyses. G-Power will be explored in later lectures, along with free online power calculators. G-Power is a free software package. It calculates sample size using an a priori statistical power calculation for a wide variety of statistical analyses. We will also supplement G-Power with free online statistical power calculators. G-Power will be explored in later lectures along with the free online power calculators. Except where otherwise noted, Clear-Sighted Statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access Clear-Sighted Statistics for free along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.